Netflix's Tiger King hits all the points that make for good television drama. Dynamic characters and fascinating plot lines that include murder, mystery, and of course, tigers. Lots and lots of tigers. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Joe Exotic and this is Sarge. He was like a mythical character living out in the middle of bum f Oklahoma who owned 1,200 tigers and lions and bears and Come here, love me. But what it offers in daytime television-worthy cliffhangers, animal rights activists say it misses in addressing the issues with animals in captivity, and that may make its most lasting memory turn out to be an abject failure for tigers. It's $50 for six minutes for two people and $5 for every additional person. So why don't you get your private playtime and you too can play with all the baby tigers and bears. Here's what Tiger King gets wrong about animal captivity. There are more tigers in captivity than there are left in the wild. There are between 5,000 to 10,000 tigers in captivity in the United States. Most of those are living in unaccredited zoos or private collections. Fewer than 4,000 tigers are estimated to exist in the wild. In Tiger King, the cats don't take center stage. They're the backdrop to the battle between the GW Exotic Animal Park owner Joe Exotic and Big Cat Rescue Sanctuary founder Carol Baskin. Baskin and Big Cat Rescue makes an enemy in Joe Exotic when she works to close his zoo. If he ever had an enemy in his life, it was Carol Baskin. Hey, all you cool cats and kittens, it's Carol at Big Cat Rescue. While unsuccessful there, she does succeed in stopping his American Mall road shows. Exotic says he loves his animals, but scenes show him mishandling them. Newborn cubs appear as little more than stuffed kids' toys, as are passed around for selfies with exotic zoo guests. And in a 2011 interview with Louis Thoreau, Exotic said that if his zoo ever went bankrupt, he would kill all of the animals himself. I think I would euthanize everything rather than put them in another facility with the same financial stress. Do you really mean that? Yeah. 1,400 animals. Yeah. Tornadoes scare me more than tigers. Why? Because at least you can fight back with a tiger. Rebecca Chaiklin, co-director of the series, said they were horrified at seeing newborns taken away from their mothers instantly. Gabriella Cowperthwaite's 2013 documentary Blackfish exposed marine animal captivity and the daily horrors taking place behind the scenes at parks like SeaWorld. It traces the life and murders committed by one of SeaWorld's star orcas, a male named Tilikum. I've been expecting somebody to be killed by a Tilikum. We weren't told much about it other than it was trainer error. The film was so shocking that ticket sales for SeaWorld have still not recovered years later. When I was making the film, all I wanted was to tell a, um, a truthful um, story and to let it be fact-driven and um, in my mind, that would be the most important thing that I could possibly do, is to sort of tell the truth. Consumers were horrified by the film, and rightfully so. It was the nail in the coffin that activists believe will ultimately lead to the end of SeaWorld as we know it. But the muted cats in Tiger King aren't likely to have the same impact on zoos. Like SeaWorld has done for decades, zoos, even those appearing in Tiger King, often tout themselves as ambassadors of conservation. These prisons for profit expose and exploit animals born into captivity under the pretense of conservation. The world's 10,000 plus zoos keep more than a million captive animals every year, according to Animal Ethics, and more than 600 million people visit zoos annually. He is a tiger in an enclosure. In the wild, they roam for hundreds of miles. And it's such a restriction. Uh, it's such a restricted existence, isn't it? Can, can you miss something you've never experienced? The animals kept there will never know life beyond isolation and the thousands of gawking human faces they see day after day. These are animals not born into captivity for conservation's sake, but solely for profit. The vast majority of zoos have no desire or resources to be effective means for conservation, Animal Ethics's website notes. If the goal of captivity is to promote wildlife conservation, dwindling wild populations all across the globe prove that it has failed miserably. Just 100 years ago, there were more than 100,000 tigers in the wild. But with numbers now under 4,000, all tiger species face imminent extinction. Wild animals have become even more sought out than ever before, and not just for viewing at zoos. Poaching is on the rise as communities are incentivized to profit from the exploitation of wild animals, rather than from their preservation. Every sort of equipment to kill a tiger 
the jaw trap, the chains, the machetes, the knives, the spears, everything was there. All they needed was a tiger in the trap. The tiger Masti was caught in a jaw trap some years ago. He had to be taken out of the forest and his paw was amputated. Many wild populations have passed the point of no return. In our lifetimes, it's entirely likely we'll see the last wild tigers disappear forever. While some wild animal populations have rebounded from poaching, statistics show that tigers may not be so lucky. There are only a few hundred Sumatran tigers left in Indonesia's wilderness, and Bengal tigers in India are constantly battling poachers. There have been more than 300 documented poaching cases since 2010. The critically endangered Siberian, or Amur tiger, was hunted for its bones, recommended in Chinese medicine. The tiger is killed not for its skin, but for its bones. Because of the belief in the Chinese system of medicine that tiger bones have some kind of an aphrodisiacal quality. Uh, this is an old belief because the tiger is a very virile and a very strong animal. So tiger bones are supposed to make you very strong and virile. Though now illegal, the demand was so high in the 90s that it wiped out more than one third of all Amur tigers. The largest cat species in the world has yet to rebound. An estimated 400 to 500 Amur tigers are left in the wild. Captive animals face other horrors besides just being isolated. Diseases like cancer, while all too common for humans, are extremely rare for animals in the wild. Scientists are even studying this in hopes that it could shed some light on disease prevention in humans. But captive wild animals don't fare as well as their free cousins. Zoo animals have incredibly high rates of cancer and other diseases that in humans we often refer to as diseases of affluence. These diseases, like obesity and heart disease, can be chalked up to poor and unnatural diets mainly, and a lack of physical activity. There are infectious disease risks in captivity too. A Bronx Zoo tiger recently made headlines when she contracted the highly infectious coronavirus from one of her keepers. Zoo keepers noticed Nadia wheezing with a dry cough, not eating. They wondered, could it be coronavirus? A special animal testing lab, not the ones used to test humans in this pandemic, revealed Nadia was infected, believed to be by an asymptomatic zookeeper. <laughs> Vets at the Bronx Zoo now believe three lions and three other tigers might also have COVID-19, but were not tested. Confinement itself plays a larger role in the onset of health issues than you might think. Zoocosis, the stressed out behavior captive animals display by pacing, rocking, and other repetitive behaviors, can lead to excess cortisol production, also known as the stress hormone. And stress is a precursor to diseases like cancer. Zoos as institutions are deeply problematic. Laurel Breitman, author of the book Animal Madness, told Slate, it's impossible to replicate even a slim fraction of the kind of life animals have in the wild. We wanted to do a piece that looked at the efficacy of keeping wild animals in cages. We never thought that it would end up in this crazy true crime direction. It's possible Tiger King's directors thought by exposing the lack of regard Exotic and others in the captive animal trade actually have for the animals, it would spark our own empathy. But the series dedicates too little time to what it means to be a tiger, both in and out of captivity, for this to happen. And, and of course, who would have guessed that the story would have, you know, gone where it had gone? You know, it took a life of its own. I think we wanted to, one, humanize people, even if we completely disagreed with some of their practices and thought they were cruel. And also, we didn't want to make a didactic documentary where we were telling people what they should think and feel, but more allowing them to get there on, on their own and see that this is not an ethical practice. The animals are far too objectified by the characters who dominate the series to help the viewer find their way around these ethical dilemmas. Still, things are changing. There are reasons to be hopeful. Wild animal circuses, once the most popular form of live entertainment in the world, have mostly all shut down. SeaWorld is, however unwilling, moving toward its inevitable end of all captive animal performances. Hollywood has replaced live animals with CGI so realistic, it's impossible for viewers to tell the difference. Storylines are getting an ethical makeover too. The 2019 live-action remake of Dumbo took a pivot toward the humane, in a PETA-approved new ending that sees the animals return to their homeland. Even Joe Exotic says he's had a change of heart since his conviction. 
In a recent interview from prison, he told Netflix that he's done with the Carol Baskin saga. And, spoiler, at the end of the series, Exotic works with animal rights group PETA to expose illegal big cat sellers and help bring an end to tigers in captivity. Joe also expresses remorse for his treatment of the zoo's animals. Go sit in the cage with your animal for a week. I mean, when I left the zoo and I sent my chimpanzees to the sanctuary in Florida and imagine what my chimpanzees went through for 18 years, uh, I'm, I'm ashamed of myself. Sanctuaries like Big Cat Rescue are advancing advocacy and policy work that help provide animals the best life possible, be those rescued from zoos, circuses, or our food system. It may not be as interesting as whether or not Carol Baskin fed her husband to tigers, or whether Joe Exotic really did try to have her killed, but they do provide us that critical reminder that animals aren't here for our entertainment any more than we are for theirs. What are your thoughts on Tiger King? Let us know in the comments below. As always, remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell. New videos every Tuesday and Friday.